Welcome back to the Growing Community Bub. How you doing? Today we are going to be following up on the Shanna Bellows versus Donald Trump saga. If you've been following along here, you know that I have covered several different videos on this and I'm only going to continue to cover more. Today, I get the great news of responding, reporting that Shanna Bellows got her hand slapped. Not much more, but it was a denial, so that is great. Stay tuned to find out why. Before that, I'm just going to get into what has happened. Maybe you didn't see the other videos. Um, I'll just give you a recap so we know, so everyone is on the same page. Maine Secretary of State Shanna Bellows made a significant decision regarding the eligibility of former President Donald Trump for Maine's 2024 Republican primary ballot. Bellows ruled that Trump did not meet the constitutional requirements to hold the office, basing her, sec her decision on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which bars individuals who have engaged in insurrection from holding office. This decision was made in the context of Trump's role in January 6, 2021 Capitol riots. Bellow's decision was part of her duty as the state chief's election official and was not based on political considerations, is what she would have us to think. However, well, I will say it was within her duties to make a decision like this. However, it has been unprecedented to have an occurrence like this. So for one, she should have stepped aside and said, this is a big, dramatic, controversial issue affecting everyone in our time. So as one individual, I don't think I can represent Maine as a whole. Furthermore, she should have recused herself because she had clear bias in in her political ideology beyond her political ideology she was clearly biased in personal decisions you can't even be a on a jury if you're that biased let alone take a case as a lawyer and Shanna Bellows is not a lawyer because if she was she would have known that she did not have that right she should have recused herself she should have stepped aside but she made a decision which removed Trump from the 2024 Republican primary ballot. But not only that, she went further afterwards. And I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, Bellow says she likened her ruling to enforcing other constitutional requirements, such as age limits for presidential candidates. The ruling was made following challenges to Trump's presidential primary nomination petition filed by registered voters in Maine. Two things there real quick. She will talk about how she kicked off Chris Christie so that he couldn't appear in Maine's primary ballot, but that is different. Those are on the books requirements already. This is taking the law into her own hands, into her own uneducated in the law experience, and adjudicating based on that. She has no right to look into the 14th Amendment in Section 3 and judge with no attorney degree. She can't, she doesn't have that right to get into that. And then beyond that, the registered voters in Maine, those five people, one of them was dismissed. I think his name was Paul. Mary Ann, whatever her name is. Um, she's just some obscure woman, can't find anything on her, and okay, so she's a Maine citizen. The other three assholes are all former politicians from Maine, so I do not give them the same credence as I would you or me. Those are scurrying, slithering, scampering, slimy individuals that we all know as politicians, and that's just the sick, unfortunate truth is most all politicians are that way today. And we need to have a time that we look forward where times are different. But for right now, unfortunately, that is what the term politician means and connotates when one brings it up in everyday language. It is not a desirable t 
term to have addressed to oneself when you're out and about. I'll say that much. Trump's legal team filed an appeal against Bellow's decision, arguing that Bellow should have recused herself due to bias and that she lacked the legal authority to disqualify him. They also claimed that Bellows denied Trump due process and argued that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment does not apply to him as he never served as an officer of the United States. A Maine judge put Bellows' decision on hold until the U.S. Supreme Court settles a similar case in Colorado. The judge's ruling leaves the Republican state in limbo ahead of the March 5th election, with Trump's name remaining on the ballot that must be sent overseas to military voters. Um, so there also is some more information where information here. So I am going to play a video for you now, and then I'm going to follow up with a little bit of context. So without further ado, let's get into that. Shannon Bellows is appealing a court's decision over former President Donald Trump's primary ballot eligibility. Earlier this week, a Maine Superior Court justice decided to leave it to the U.S. Supreme Court to make the final ruling. Now, the nation's highest court is taking up a sim similar case from Colorado. Secretary of State Shannon Bellows and Colorado's state Supreme Court came to similar conclusions just last year, saying Donald Trump is not eligible to be on those states' primary ballots because of his alleged involvement in the January 6th insurrection. Now, once the U.S. Supreme Court makes a ruling, the main judge says Secretary Bellows can modify, withdraw, or confirm her prior decision. For political science researchers, they say the secretary appealed because the Supreme Court's decision may come too late. I don't see how she could do anything other than appeal this case for the, for the reasons that we just discussed, right? I think she has to... She needs an answer on this, and she needs an answer certainly from the state courts, right? She she could need one from the Supreme Court too, but she might not get that. She doesn't know what she's going to get from that. She needs an answer before um, before the the primary election in March. I think it's I think she had to appeal this decision. The Supreme Court will hear arguments in the Colorado case next month. Are you buying that? Because I'm not. After Shanna Bellows made her decision, it went up to a superior court. And the judge ruled that until the U.S. Supreme Court heard Colorado's case, they weren't going to do, they weren't going to make a decision of their own. We all know that case is on February 8th. Maine's primary isn't until March 5th. So I don't understand why they're talking about time. I don't understand why they're like, time, we might not have time. We might not have time. So what you're saying is you want to remove Donald Trump from Maine's ballot before it goes overseas to our service men and women because you're afraid that you know how they're going to vote and you want to control how they vote. Is that it? Because that's the only decision... That's the only reasoning that I can understand because February 8th, the Supreme Court is going to hear the case with Colorado versus Trump. After that date, it can move forward. Of course, there's other things, and but February 8th to March 5th, there is plenty of time. So I don't understand this argument with time, and it's a very shallow argument unless you're trying to prevent service men and women from having Donald Trump's name. Because what if you, what if Shanna Bellows, Shanna Bellows' decision was to stand? Then it'd be removed for servicemen and women and sent overseas. They wouldn't be able to vote for Donald Trump, even if afterwards the Supreme Court in February 8th decided that Colorado was not constitutional and therefore also flipped Maine's. Well, the rest of us here in mainland USA would be able to vote for Donald Trump but not the servicemen and women. So really, every which way I look at this, it seems to be screwing over servicemen and women. So Shanna Bellows, weak argument, everyone defending her, weak ass water. Spill it somewhere else because I don't want any part of it. And before I get into the main Supreme Court's decision, I have a follow-up article that I'm going to 
Discuss. This is from Newsfeed. State Supreme Court delivers unanimous decision on Donald Trump case. Maine Supreme Court has refused to decide whether former President Donald Trump should remain on the ballot in the state before the U.S. Supreme Court decides on a similar case in Colorado. Colorado declared Trump ineligible for the White House under a constitutional clause that prevents insurrectionists from holding office. Maine, another Democratic-led state, moved to disqualify Trump from running on the state's primary ballot citing Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. A state superior court judge placed the decision on hold until the U.S. Supreme Court hears arguments on a similar case regarding Colorado on February 8th. Maine Secretary of State Shanna Bellows then went on to appeal the state judge's decision seeking input from Maine's highest court first. Shanna Bellows couldn't just let that lie where she says, all right, an attorney, a judge, someone with history and a past in judicating the law has ruled and said, we're going to hold off. Shanna Bellows then went above and beyond to try and enforce her will upon us, the people. She is not a elected individual. She got chosen by Congress, not you and me, we the people of Maine. So then for her to go above and beyond to do this is egregious. And she needs to step down. She needs to stop. And I am happy to report that she got her hand slapped. However, with a unanimous decision, Maine Supreme Judicial Court dismissed Bellow's appeal, ruling that the U.S. Supreme Court should weigh in before she can decide whether she wants to withdraw, modify, or uphold her decision to keep Trump on the primary ballot. The primary vote in Maine is set for Super Tuesday, March 5th, and some voters might cast their ballots before the issue of whether Trump would be on the ballot is still unresolved. So that was from News, news Feed one day ago. And the filming of this on the 29th. So the situation has drawn national attention and is part of a broader legal and constitutional debate regarding candidate eligibility for public office. The final outcome in Maine, as well as in other states facing similar legal challenges, will likely be influenced by the Supreme Court's decision in Colorado case on February 8th. So that's going to be a big thing to pay attention to. And we are still a little over a week away from that decision by the posting of this video. Uh, we'll be just a couple days away from the decision. And of course, I will stay up on that. Once the decision's made in Colorado, about Colorado, then the Supreme Court will send it back down to uh, the judge before them. And that judge will then rule on whether or not what Shanna Bellows did was legal. So there's, that's just a tiny little tidbit of what's going on here in the state of Maine with Shanna Bellows and all that drama. Of course, mainstream current will stay on top of that, so tune back in. And in the comments down below, leave some discussion. Uh, let's talk about what you guys think. The Section 3 of the 14th Amendment is, I thought, clear, but then there's a lot of debate by people. So what do you think? Is it is it as clear as people are making it out to be? Is it wordy and up to debate? Can there be some scrutiny in it? What's your understanding of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, and how do you think it applies to this? And then furthermore, what do you think the Supreme Court's decision will be on February 8th? Because the whole world is going to be watching. So it's going to be, it is going to be a time to be alive. Not necessarily a great one, but this is going to be a time historians look back to. And here we are right in the midst of it. So buckle up, hold on. For now, I'm your host, Drew Hoagland. Till next time, bub.